Bruh. You see, recruiting season starts in September, and I had only taken like one CS class at that point. Uh, I didn't really know what a data structure was. I didn't know what an algorithm was. I didn't even really know what a coding interview looked like. My resume at that point was basically a bunch of like unrelated experience and then one personal project that I had worked on. So throughout that entire semester, I applied to probably like 190 companies. Uh, over the total like course of the year, I'd applied to a total of 300 companies. I actually had an Excel sheet of all these companies where red was a rejection, yellow was a callback, and green was like an offer. Out of the 300 that semester, I had only two callbacks that semester. That's less than a 1% callback rate. So the first call was with the Yahoo Fantasy Sports team, which was really cool. Uh, they asked me how to reverse a linked list. Hold up, here's a little context. A linked list is one of the basic data structures in computer science that show up pretty often during coding interviews. Reversing a linked list is kind of a meme at this point. It's one of the most common problems out there and it's considered really easy. When you first start studying for coding interviews, it's usually one of the first problems you learn how to solve. Usually, when reversing a linked list is asked during an interview, it's a warm-up problem for the actual question. And yep, you guessed it, it was a warm-up in this interview too. And it's a warm-up, I probably passed it, right? Nope, I... Failed. <laughs> yeah, I literally failed it 10 minutes in. What? The only thing I learned from that interview was basically what a linked list was. My second call, which I don't even, I don't even know how this is possible. My second call was with the Book of Faces, Facebook. Uh, Zuck himself called me and was like, hey, we really like your experience. And I was like, what experience? But you know, I went on with the interview. I set a new record for failing an interview. I failed that probably within the first six or seven minutes of the interview because they asked me, first of all, a super hard question. I don't know if I could even solve this question today. Ever since that failure, uh, Facebook has pretty much auto-rejected me every year since because I've applied every year and I get rejected probably within 24 hours each time. So they were probably like, wow, this guy was so bad. Like he had such a terrible performance that He's never gonna make it to our level. So, kinda sad. So at this point, it was around October and I was feeling pretty dejected. Uh, I'd blown my only two chances. I had uh, basically bombed or not heard back from any of the co-challenges I'd gotten and I was getting no more callbacks. It was pretty rough. So around this time, I started scheming for some ways to add like software development experience to my resume. The first thing I did was join a research lab. So joining a CS research lab at Berkeley is actually really, really difficult. It's not that easy, but uh, joining like a psychology or business focused lab is easier, mostly because people are always hungry for like some kind of software development. So after emailing a few professors, I joined a lab and got to work on their project's website. To be completely honest, this was basic HTML and CSS. And I basically took a template that was nice online and just edited it in the content. But you know, that's all it really takes to be like a pretty basic software developer. And it still counts as experience. Next, with some older friends, I decided to try and start a club. So we decided to start a software consulting club with a focus on health. And this involved a ton of work. Uh, we, I had to make the website, I had to set up the organization, I had to send out a ton of cold emails, I had to set up like the recruiting pipeline to get people on our team. At the end of the day though, it was something I founded, it was something I led, and it was something I, I could put on my resume. And it was somewhat technical, at least until it died three months later. But that's a different story. By December, I also finished my data structures class, which I had been taking that semester. So this finally meant I knew what a linked list was along with a bunch of other things. So this was when I started doing a little bit of lead code uh, because at this point I knew that coding interviews and coding challenges were kind of based on these lead code style coding puzzle questions. So armed with my new knowledge, I did a couple of lead code questions, though I didn't do too many. I did around 10 to 15 because I actually spent my winter break working on something else. My main thing over winter break was kind of supercharging my personal project. Before it was a web app built with Python and Django. And this time I created more features and also created a mobile app using React Native. I did this for a couple of reasons. Number one, I use the app every day. So 
since I wanted a better experience, what better way than to create the mobile app for myself? Number two, the app wasn't really readily polished enough for the public yet. So I took this time to kind of polish it up so that someone could visit it online or someone could download it from the app store or the play store and I would feel comfortable with them downloading it. I wouldn't feel like embarrassed about the state of the app. And this actually worked out for the better. Number three, I had taken note of requirements both by hiring managers and by recruiters throughout the past semester. And I saw that React was a pretty common ask. So as a result, by using React Native to build my app, I was able to kill a bunch of birds with one stone. This honestly was what I spent like 95% of my winter break on. And it worked out for the best because at the end of the break, I had an app on the app store. Plus I had this nice website that someone could visit and be like, oh, like this, project is legit. So by January, my resume looked a lot different than it did back in September. I had iterated upon it a lot. I had added these new experiences. And honestly, I felt a lot more confident and experienced this time around. So in January, we had one more career fair. And I went to that again, of course. But at this point, I was really desperate. Like I was also at the same time cold emailing startups left and right, asking them if they wanted an intern, an unpaid intern, like literally anything. And unfortunately, like I literally got nowhere. So finally in March, I walked out of my bio class. Yeah, I was actually still pre-med at this time. Um, but I walked out of my bio class and they ran and I got a random call. And it was a call from ServiceNow. ServiceNow had gotten my resume during the career fair and they actually wanted to interview me right there and then. So the questions they asked weren't really lead code style questions, even though that's what I was expecting. Instead, they asked me questions about my personal project. And this was really lucky because I had spent my entire winter break going over this. So the questions they asked were basically like web technology questions. So they asked things like describe different HTTP methods, design different authentication methods. So I knew this really well. And as a result, I passed the interview. <laughs> now, the craziest part though about this entire experience isn't the fact that I passed the interview or that they didn't ask me any lead code style questions. The craziest part is that I got denied. <laughs> Just kidding. They gave me the offer. <laughs> and the next day I got, and I thought they were bull me, but the next day I got an offer letter, or offer email for tech uh, in my inbox. That's how my internship search ended. And that's how I got my first software internship. I do also want to note that ever since that experience, I have continued getting rejected a lot. I'm of the thought camp that you can probably increase your chances of getting lucky if you put in the effort. I think effort is the most crucial thing here and then luck follows effort. It's not really a linear relationship. It's definitely more of like a positive correlation. And the only part that you can control is the effort. So I just try to make sure that my effort stays high and just hope for the best on the luck side of things. <sighs> Advice. So number one is to prepare early. Lead code is lead code and lead code kind of questions are kind of part of the coding interview now. So if you can try to start lead coding over the summer um, and just do a little bit every day because I think the consistency is more important than just like cramming for like two weeks. Uh, number two, keep iterating. I did this a lot. I iterated on my resume probably like every week, every two weeks, every three weeks, uh, where I like would edit my resume based on feedback I got from recruiters and other people. Number three, make some CS friends out pre-med at the time. So I didn't really have any CS friends, but if I did have CS friends, I think I would have gone a little bit more ahead because I, I would have had a community that knew things that I didn't at the time. And that's always helpful. It's also helpful to have some moral support during the interview process because you see what your peers are going through. And last but not least, number four, don't give up. Failure and rejection are just part of the process. They're considered practice for success. and you will continue failing and getting rejected your entire life, like it or not. But as a result, your successes will also come more often and they will also be bigger. And that's why I don't think it's right to be scared of failure. I don't think it's right to be scared of rejection. You can be scared of it, but you just gotta learn to tolerate it. You miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you have any feedback or any questions, it's anything at all, uh, please do leave a comment below uh, and then leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Thanks.